We're going to take a look at the law of sines. It's either like this first one or the second one. The second one's really the same as the first. It's just flipped upside down. It doesn't make a difference which one you do if you put the sides on the top and the sine of the angles underneath, or if you put the sine of the angles on top and the sides opposite underneath. It does not make a difference. You normally only work with two of the three uh, fractions at a given time. And to use law of sines, you need to know an opposite pair, like side A and angle A, or side B and angle B, or side C and angle C. If you don't have an opposite pair, then you're not able to use the law of sines. Law of sines works for all triangles, including right triangles, but it also works for non-right triangles. A lot of what we looked at earlier only dealt with right triangles. Now, there's some different situations that arise. If you're given two angles and a side, or a side between two angles, or an angle between two sides, or all three sides, we know from geometry that those prove triangles congruent, so there's only one triangle available. If you're dealing with all three sides, you just have to know that yours, or not, all three angles, that they all have to add up to 180. If you're dealing with all three sides, just remember that the two shorter sides have to be longer, add up to be longer than the third side. But if we end up with this situation here of an angle not between your two sides, that does not prove triangles congruent, then you actually have to check to see how many triangles you have. So if you're given this situation, then you got extra work to do because it could be no triangle formed, one triangle formed, or it could be two triangles formed. But if it's any one of these first ones, then you don't have to worry about it. You just go ahead and solve it like normal. So here, we're given a picture. And, whoops, sorry about that. And we're given an angle, an angle, and a side. If you draw that out, you'll notice that your side is not between your two angles so it's an angle angle side angle angle side that works for us that's only one triangle so we don't have to worry about how many triangles are available so now we need to go ahead and uh, find c now we could easily find angle c because we know true to the triangles they have to add up to 180. so then we could go ahead and go sine of our angle. This is our opposite pair, because notice we have an angle and a side opposite. I want the sine of my angle over the side opposite equals the sine of the angle C over side C. Because when you subtract these two angles from 180, you get side or angle C up here, which is 16 degrees. Now we gotta get C out of the bottom, so we could just cross multiply being a fraction equal to a fraction. Then we want to get our calculator ready for them, so we'll get C in one side by itself. So it's all ready to be typed into our calculator. We can type it in, making sure we're in the degree mode with our calculator, and we get C. Okay, so here we are given a triangular plot of land where we have one angle another angle, and the side between is 115. Drawing that out, we will get this here. Here we have a side between two angles, which is an angle side angle, which only forms one triangle, so we only need to be concerned about just solving it like normal. We don't have to be concerned about how many triangles are formed. That's only in the side side angle situation. We know two angles. We can subtract them from 180 to be able to get B. Once we know what B is, we now have an opposite pair, so then we can use law of sines. Without knowing what angle B was, we would not have had an opposite pair. So we could go the sine of our angle for our opposite pair over the side opposite equals the sine of angle A over the side of A. Then, being a fraction equaling a fraction, we can cross multiply. 
Then to get A by itself, we'd have to undo timesing by a sine of 17. So we divide by that. That's our calculator ready form, and we type it in. We would now know two sides, but we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem, because remember, the Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. So we're going to have to use the law of sines again. Still with our opposite pair, equals, and now we're looking for C, so we'll go over, or equals the sine of C over side C. Then we'll go ahead and cross multiply. Get C by itself, that's our calculator ready form, and we type it in. Now, if you are given a side side angle situation, it could be one triangle, no triangle, or two triangles. If your opposite side of your angle is greater than your adjacent side to your angle, it's one triangle. If your opposite side is equal to your adjacent times the sine of your angle, it's one triangle. If your opposite is less than the adjacent side times the sine of your angle, then it's no triangle. If it's neither one of these three, then it's a two triangle situation. And that's when it's an acute angle. If you're given an obtuse angle, there's really only one option. That your opposite side has to be greater than your adjacent side. Otherwise, there's no triangle. So, here we have a given situation. If you draw that out, your angle, your opposite side, because it's A and A, and then side B would have to be adjacent to your angle. So I put my angle down here, my opposite side, and my adjacent. This is a side-side angle situation. So we got to check to see how many triangles are formed. So I did not necessarily form a triangle because I didn't know for sure if it would form a triangle. However, we know there's only one triangle because we have an acute situation and our opposite to sides 21 are adjacent to Five. So that's this top situation. So it's only one triangle. So it's just like the problems we were doing before with solving them. Um, we could extend this down, form a triangle. We have our opposite pair. If we have side B, we would then find angle B next. So we could go ahead and do our opposite pair equals sine of B over five. We could go ahead and cross multiply, try to get the sine of B by itself by dividing by 21. Then we'd have to undo our sine, which would be a sine inverse. That's our calculator ready form. So therefore, we could then go ahead and find angle B. And now, if you know two angles, you can easily get your third angle by subtracting from 180. So 180 minus our given angle minus what we were just figured out for B, tells us that C, angle C, is about 148. Then we can start off by doing our opposite pair, then going the sine of our angle over the remaining side that we need to find, which is C. We could cross multiply, Try to get C by itself by dividing by the sine of 26. That's our calculator ready form. We type it in and we get our answer. So let's look at this situation. We have B and we have B. So we have an opposite pair and we have another side. So if we draw that out, you can see that we now have a side-side angle situation. So we now want to go ahead and go back and look at this to see which one of these categories it is because it's a side-side angle situation and it's an acute. For this particular problem, once we draw it, it's not a triangle because our opposite side of 5 is less than adjacent center of your angle. So if you go adjacent center of your angle, 12 times the sine of your angle, you can see that 5 is less than that. So in other words, with this being a 
relatively big angle and this being a relatively big side, your opposite side's not long enough to reach down to form a triangle. It's too short. So therefore, if it's not a triangle, you can't solve it. So here we have an opposite pair of the A's, and now we have an adjacent side. So we'll draw that situation. Once again, we have to decide how many triangles we have. Our opposite's not greater than our adjacent. If we go adjacent sine of our angle and compare it to our opposite, well, we'll realize that it's not really any of those situations, so it's the bottom, so it's a two triangle situation. Now, in this case, we're only trying to find B. Well, to begin with, you go ahead and find B like you would normally, and don't be concerned about the two triangle situation. So you go your opposite pair, sine of your angle over its opposite side, equals, in this case, sine of B over side B. We could cross multiply, then try to get the sine of B by itself by dividing by 6. And then we can go our inverse sine. And this is our calculator ready form. We type it in. Now that we have two angles, if we needed to find our third angle, C, we could easily do that by subtracting from 180. However, when you're dealing with two triangles, in your second triangle, your missing or second version of your angle, B, and it's B because B was the first angle we found here. If our first angle we found over here was C, then we'd be dealing with C over here. It's just supplementary. So for your second triangle, you would still have these original three given information. But in your second triangle, angle B would just be 180 minus what you just figured out. And so whatever that would end up being, 126.1 degrees. So that's what we end up having. Now, if you knew your new angle B and your original given A, you could find your new C by subtracting from 180. So your C's will always be totally different from one triangle to the other because your one angle B is different. So consider this situation here. We have two fire towers. They're straight east and west of each other and five miles apart. Fire one, or there's a fire that's at a bearing that's 27 degrees east of north. So you go straight north, you rotate 27 degrees to the east. So if that's 27, that means this is a 90 degree angle for the whole thing, that would be 63. From tower two, we gotta go straight north and rotate 32 degrees to the west. Well, if that's 32 and the whole thing's 90, we could easily figure out this one here. If you know these two angles, you can easily get this one here by subtracting from 180. Now, we want to know how far the fire is from tower 1. Well, we now have an opposite pair, so we could use law of sines. So we could go the sine of 58 over x is equal to the sine of 59 over 5, cross multiply, your calculator ready form and type it in remember to include units